Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Embarcadero by Renegade Game Studios. It plays one to four players, takes roughly an hour to an hour and a half to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Embarcadero, well, you are going to be attempting to build shipyards and crates and structures on top of these ships in San Francisco, loading them up and trying to score as many points as possible while building the ships and buildings that go atop them. As you go through each round, you're going to score based on the specific shipyards, how you're doing on the city council track, and of course, each unique objective card at the end of the round. You'll score points for all your buildings, different ships, and of course, your area of control, and whoever has the most points at the end of the third round is the winner. Now, be careful though, because much like the game Whistle Mountain and the game It's a Wonderful World, you will be placing down specific locations as well as tiles and building atop them while also doing a sort of a draft. To begin the game, you're simply going to set up the board based number of players, and you're going to go ahead and start with one player selecting and placing down a ship, another player doing the same, and then placing down five cards. You'll rinse and repeat doing this uh, five, uh, five times for each round, and at the end of the third round, that's when you'll score. Let's talk about the setup for the game, and of course what you do on your turn, and then we'll follow it up with my review. To begin the game, go ahead ahead and choose the board you'll be playing on. It's either going to be the one to three player board or you're going to flip it over for the four player board. Set aside all of the ships, all of the different cards in the game based on the rule book. You'll be taking these red flag cards and shuffling them up and placing them down here. Take three random objective cards and shuffle them and deal them face up in each of the three areas on the board. Then go ahead and take your ship cards and your building cards, shuffle them separately and deal each one of them four cards face Face up below them to form the market. So you should have eight cards, four buildings, and four ships. You'll also be taking the docks and the building location tiles and placing them above so that you can utilize them when need be, make sure they're in within reach of all players. All of these sunk tokens will be within reach as well as the currency and additional tokens. Each player is going to get a player board as well as four cards from the ship deck and four cards from the building deck. And of course they are going to be randomized. Each player will also get a player card. If you would like to play the easy version of the game, you'll simply start with the front side. And of course, if you want to play the advanced version of the game, the back side will come with advanced instructions for additional gameplay. The starting side will Will give you a starting resource, or as the backside will give you a starting resource and additional ongoing and on time effects, as well as an end of game bonus. Every single player is going to get 15 currency to start the game off with as well as all of their building tiles and all of their uh, location tiles as well. Choose the first player. They're going to get the Embarcadero token and then go ahead and place each player's tokens at the beginning of the city council track as well as at the beginning of the score marker track set at zero. Each player is going to get a three spaces long ship and they can place it adjacent to any of the ports available to them as well as of course placing one of their buildings on the ship of their choosing the one that they placed down then begin the game by selecting five cards of the eight that you selected and pay the cost of the top left hand corner of the card to keep it in your hand discard the rest of the cards that you're not going to be utilizing and begin the game with those five cards on your turn, you're going to have three options. Option one is to place down a ship, which generally is going to be for free, and it'll be associated with paying a cost if you're placing it adjacent to a dock, as well as placing a building on that ship. Or you can choose to place a building down. When placing a building down, there's going to be resource costs associated with those buildings, and you have to have them adjacent to your player board. If you do, you can place them down, provided that you have enough structures in a lengthy, uh, appropriate space to place them down. So if a structure costs you three spaces, you have to have three structures uh, on top. And then when you do so, you can place your building down, which will score you additional points, as well as, of course, additional resources that you can use from round and turn to turn. Once you've gone ahead and chosen to place one of those two down, you'll pass your turn by simply taking one of the market cards and paying for them and putting them into your stack for later use on the next round. 
If you don't want to place a building or a ship down, the last option is you can scrap. At the bottom of every card on the left hand side is a scrap cost or a benefit of some type, whether it be to place additional structures down, to get additional currency, or to move up a track. Utilize that card's benefit and then discard that card, scrapping it into the discard pile of the appropriate deck. After you've chosen one of the three options, bought a card from the market and replaced it, the next player will then get a turn to go. And you'll do this until all the cards in your hand are gone. When that happens, the end of the round will trigger. You'll score points based on the round, whether it tells you to score for the dock or the council, as well as the benefit of the card. This one here says whoever has the most money will get a certain number of points. Check to see who is first, second, and third place. And then you're going to set up for the next round. I would suggest flipping over the rounds card to denote you're on the next round. You'll be discarding the market decks. You'll be placing out new cards and you'll take all the cards that you drafted in the previous round and put them into your hand. Once you do that, select the player who is last in line as far as the point scoring system goes, and they will begin the round by placing down one of their cards and rinsing and repeating the whole process. You go through that round, you're going to then do the victory conditions for the second round, flip that over, the third round, and then finally, you're going to score your points. There's additional end game bonuses depending on the buildings that you place down. There'll be additional um, uh, points as far as the city council and the docks go, as well as any additional resources you may have could result in you winning if there is a tie. Highest player around the board is the winner, and if you go past 100 points, take one of these markers to signify that you have lapped the board. Player with the most points is the winner of the game Embarcadero, a pretty simple, pretty straightforward game with a lot of twists and turns, drafting, and of course puzzling as you attempt to build structures onto docks and place buildings on them to score as many points as you can in the streets and of course the docks of San Francisco. Embar Embarcadero is basically a puzzle game with a unique drafting system. You're going to be drafting at the beginning of the game or basically selecting cards at the end of the game to utilize in order to kind of create your engine while then placing those cards down. Boats first, then structures, then buildings, scoring points for buildings when you place them down and utilizing your resources from your buildings and from your boats in order to construct even better buildings as the rounds progress. You must follow certain rules when placing down against structures, that are next to your opponents, you'll gain bonuses, you'll have to pay additional points when placing next to docks, and then of course during these scoring rounds, whoever has the most area controlled by each docks will score additional victory points. Whoever is the farthest along on this council track is going to be scoring victory points as well, as whenever they move down this track, they'll score additional benefits based on what the track says. If you move down, for instance, four spaces, you'll flip over these cards here, which can enact or allow you to be able to create additional buildings, whereas also be able to select from different benefits, whether it be one-time use tokens, additional currency, and of course these dock tiles, which can increase the length of your dock, or you can use them as building tiles, allowing you to place them on top of your buildings so that you can go ahead and build, uh, or structures so you can go ahead and build unique uh, additional buildings. The farther or larger that your dock is, the more points you can score by controlling the most area, and you may never place boats, buildings, or structures on the dock area outlined here. Your objective is to control area, build the best buildings as you can, and use combinations to create the highest amount of victory points at the end of the game. There's a ton of different buildings that will give you additional scoring based on the buildings that you control, based on the boats that you control, and based on the resources that you can utilize. You'll have to sink certain boats at certain points in order to score higher buildings, but at that cost you'll gain, you will gain great benefit, allowing you to utilize the combinations, and of course it only blocks off the resources, so you can still use the category of the boat that you are sinking, which is great, especially for the end game. If you're playing with the base game, you're simply going to use the base character, which is nice because it gives you a resource, but utilizing the advanced character increases the game's complexity and challenge, giving you more unique end game and of course mid game abilities that you can trigger uh, while also keeping yourself different or unique compared to all the other players. This is a puzzle game first and foremost, and you are attempting to build the best location locations possible while trying to avoid your opponent's areas. The more players, the more crowded it gets, and of course the less players, the more head-to-head -head it gets. Selecting specific boats and or structures is going to be useful, but you may or may not get them. So there is competitive aspects in the game as to what players place and where, and what players buy, and at what time. 
but as far as them actually specifically targeting you, that's not the case in this game. Whistle Mountain and this game share a lot of similarities uh, as far as their complexity, stylization, and puzzle aspects, whereas in Whistle Mountain you're kind of building the scaffolding on top of a mountain and you're building upwards. This one here you are building boats, structures, buildings, structures, buildings, up to four levels, scoring additional points per level based on the building that you build. Uh, with the game Wonderful World, you're drafting. You'll draft and then you'll build with an engine builder, allowing you to get bigger and better stuff. And this game does that as well. The difference though in this one here is not only that it combines the two, but also on your turn, you are building aspect, which is the puzzle aspect, and then you are drafting right afterwards on the same turn. You'll do that five times. Whereas something like it's it's a Wonderful World is going to allow you to draft first, then play at the same time, and then we all draft again. This one here is kind of like you're thinking ahead while playing in the moment, which makes it complex. And for some players, that's going to definitely be a negative because it's a lot of thinking, a lot of choices, and a lot of things can go wrong. Best laid plans and all, it might not work out to your benefit. And of course, that's where the interesting and, and fun aspect comes into the game. If you want a thinker, if you want a puzzler, and if you like drafting prior to when you need to play cards, so drafting round one for round two while playing round one's cards, and you like that aspect, this is going to be a big win for you. But for some, and maybe even a good portion of players, this might be too complex, and one player might just outdo you each and every time. Specifically when I play against people like Callie in these type of games, she will always devastate me because she's always going to be thinking ahead and can play in the moment. I'm usually only good at engine building, which is what I like about this game, the engine building aspect and how you can build bigger and better buildings at the cost of sinking your ships. And of course, from round to round, having more resources, but the puzzling aspect of placing them down on the board, thinking ahead in the matter of what different types of buildings you'll need later. And then of course, how you want to build your structures and when you want to scrap, because scrapping will be integral to your plan as opposed to always playing all all five of your cards. This is an excellent game. It's complex, it's strategic, and it's very thinky. And if you don't mind the drafting aspect, which I think is the only thing that people are going to kind of be either for or completely against, this is going to be a game you would strongly, uh, you should strongly take a look at. The artwork is excellent. The quality is excellent. This is my favorite game from Renegades, hands down. This gets my seal of approval with the caveat that it is a thinky game, it is challenging, and there's a lot going on and a lot of ways you can mess up. And if you don't mess up on your first game at least a few times, I would be very impressed because there's a lot of things that can go wrong, not only by chance, chance, but mainly by intentional purpose of your opponents and of course just on your own failed merits when it comes to building the correct spaces needed in order to win. But that's where the fun comes. And also with more players the game gets better because things start getting more havocky. There's more things you're gonna have to worry about, cards that you may or may not see again, and how you place matters. Uh, overall, this is an excellent game. I would give this game a 9 out of 10 with my small caveat of extremely thinkiness. This is going to be for modern gamers. This is not going to be a family game. This is not one of those games you're going to break out with your kids. Expect to break this out at game night for the main game of the evening and prepare to decimate your opponents or just try to do your best at building your own unique structures and avoiding all the chaos that will ensue in a four player game. There's also an expansion that plays five players. I have not played it, but I figured you should know in case you want to play. And there's also a solo mode variant. And in a game like this, I have no interest in a solo mode variant because I like the strategic aspect of placing them down and kind of working against my opponents, adding a little bit of a social aspect to the game. Overall though, take a look. Please link down below in the description for Embarcadero by Renegade Game Studios. This gets my solid seal of approval. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Embarcadero by Renegade Game Studios. Like I said before, there's a link. Go ahead and also hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. It greatly helps me out. I do greatly appreciate it. You don't even need to watch all my videos, but on the occasion, if you see a game that you're interested in, take a look at it, see if it's something you like, and pick it up, or, or don't. I just I would really appreciate it if you see seen more than one of my videos right now would be the time to say you know what maybe he's got some other cool games that I can take a look at we'd like to grow we'd like to expand and create even better content and of course we can't do that without your support let me know what you think about the game down below in the comments section I do reply and I'm actually curious to hear what you guys have to think about a game like this and it also kind of determines what games I review in the future based on the audience that I have and what they're interested in thank you guys so much patreons especially that dollar a month helps us greatly as always I look forward 
forward to building additional ships, buildings, and structures in the wharfs of San Francisco with you next time.